talk about the relationship between the gospel as the early Christians preached it and the power structures of the Roman world. The word gospel, euangelion, is a word actually sometimes used in the Roman Empire. It's used especially when good news is proclaimed about an emperor. The birth of an emperor, an emperor coming into a victory over a rebellious nation. And some people have suggested that not only at that level of the language, but in other respects too, the early Christians thought of themselves as first and foremost an anti-imperial entity, something designed to undercut the emperor and the power of the emperor in the Roman world. I think myself the power of the gospel is something deeper and wider than simply a power to undercut this or that emperor or even the imperial structures of the Roman world. If we think of power in terms of hierarchies of authority, Roman power is based on, well, the might of its army and at the head of the army, the emperor, who was so powerful that the emperor was understood to stand, as it were, at the interface the uh, point of connection between the divine and the human. So sometimes the emperors could be called sons of God, sometimes they could be described in terms as if they were gods. Often they would be included in the worship of the normal Roman gods. They were that powerful, they were that much, as it were, representatives of even expressions of divine power in the world. The early Christians believed there was a power greater and deeper and wider than the power of the Roman Empire. The power of God, who was in charge of all history, and God, God's self-expression, God's demonstration of power in Christ, in the resurrection of Christ, and in the Lordship of Christ. So when, when Christians were baptized, the, the, uh, the first and the simplest Christian confession they made was Jesus is Lord. Now we see the effect of that expression of where power really runs in the world when we see in, in the New Testament early Christian encounters with Roman authorities, most dramatically of course in the crucifixion of Jesus which was punishment inflicted by Pilate and by the Roman authorities. Now crucifixion was meant to be a demonstration of power. It was how you, hu uh, how you humiliate victims, putting them in the most powerless situation possible. The early Christians, however, identified in this ultimate symbol of weakness the power of God. And that power is a power that doesn't just, as it were, undercut or overrule the power of the Romans who crucified Jesus. They saw it as undercutting and overruling every system of human power, every evil power in the world, which might indeed come to expression through the Roman emperor, but might also have wider, even deeper expressions. So you get that initial sense of clash at the crucifixion of Jesus, but a clash with the powers of the cosmos as a whole, and not just a clash with the Roman authorities, this or that Roman emperor in particular. You see that on a wider scale in the book of, in the book of Revelation, where indeed the Roman Empire is figured as a kind of beast that has taken illegitimate control of the world. But what the story of Jesus, the, the lamb crucified, killed in the book of Revelation and what that demonstrates is the power of God throughout all of history 
at a much deeper level than simply the Roman Empire at a much lo in a much longer frame. So that the Roman Emperor becomes not just the immediate opposite to the Gospel, but merely a pawn, as it were, in much larger forces at work in the world. And that same uh, sense of the clash of power is what runs to the heart of Paul's Gospel. Several people have argued recently that when Paul says Jesus is Lord, he has in the back of his mind or means us to read between the lines, and Caesar is not Lord, as if there is some direct and immediate competition between Jesus and Caesar. I think myself that's too narrow a way of reading Paul. The fact that Jesus is Lord means that he is Lord over the, all dimensions of the cosmos. And for Paul, the Roman Emperor is just one relatively limited and political demonstration of the much wider powers at work in this world. Powers that Paul calls death or sin or the principalities and powers. The powers that control all dimensions of human life at a much wider level and a much deeper level than simply the Roman Empire. So when Paul does not directly critique the Roman Emperor, this is not because he's afraid to do so, it's not because he's forgotten to do so, it's not because he is naive politically, it's because actually he sees a deeper, he has a deeper understanding of, of history and he sees the Emperor as simply one figure not to be taken as with as much seriousness as the Romans themselves give their emperor, one figure within a larger cosmic battlefield, a battlefield in which the new creation in Christ is remaking the world and pushing back the forces of sin and of death that control all of humanity. <laughs>